gallery. So Afro Art Gallery started a couple of years ago, about 2016. And what we do is every year we celebrate an iconic writer through um, arts, culture, and also Green Mother Earth. So our iconic figure for this year is Professor Kofi Awuno, who is one of our best um, writers in this country and Africa at large. So if you are here today, what we are about to do is we'll be doing book reading. After the book reading, we'll be doing um, poem selection. After the poem selection, we'll also be doing um, the selection of our cultural dance from any of the existing regions here in Ghana. Then we will perform it at the National Theatre come 22nd June. So without much to say, let's invite our book reader for this afternoon, which is Mr. James. So you are all welcome once again to the Anansi. I honestly don't know where to start from and where to even end. Let me just tell you something small about Ianase. Though you know, but once you enter the building, you are obliged to uh, be convicted that it is a public library. Yes, but we have an extension of the library, which is the IHAP, what you see at your back, the computers. So the world is advancing things are changing sometimes it's difficult for some of us to pick hard copies to read we are often glued to our mobile phones our tablets our laptops and know and so if you are wondering what the e stands for it is the electronic aspect of the library so there are some of the books that we have on the computers poetry fiction non-fiction and a whole lot on the computers for you to have access to them Every Saturday, what happens here is a coding class. We teach children robotics, electronics. Uh, they develop their own softwares and mobile applications. And so they use the computers to do those things. Yeah, so that is the electronic aspect of Ianase. We have storytelling sessions by the fireside. I think most of you have not heard of it. Oh, I'm lying. Show by hands. If you fell off by the fireside, let me see your hand up. Oh, <laughs> it's quite, it's quite unfortunate it died off. And uh, so we brought it back. My COVID came and our finances and everything went down. But we are trying our best possible to um, bring by the fireside. I know, Madam, they, they. They benefited a lot from it. I, I happen to enjoy the new school. So I, I played as Anansi. Um, that was the 2018, 2019, and 2020, and COVID came. So I was in school back then. I'm telling you an interesting story. Listen, I was in school back then. I was just a student. And I decided that, okay, I'll take part in by the fireside as just a fictional character, Anansi. I played Anansi and the year 2021, I graduated from school. Now, someone who was just playing as a fictional character with the library, you are done with your stage art, you just move on with your life. But because of reading and because of taking part in library activities, I didn't struggle to go and look for work that, okay, government should employ me somewhere, they should put me somewhere. I was just there, they called me that I should bring my CV. Back then my CV was just one page, so they would call it a resume. I, was, I just brought it and, wow. I guess you've read a poem, but you've forgotten about the person. So Professor Kofiawono is, a, I think I would say one of our biggest poets ever not in africa not in asia but the whole world there are poems i will i will mention a few poems to you that will sound very familiar and i'll tell you the year the poem was written and the uh, the year the poem came to life there's this poem the master brewer the master brewer we will take a read, so don't worry. 
and there's another poem called the cathedral you may have come across it like okay all right so what i'm going to do today is okay the cathedral was written 1973 1973 as part of his collection and the memories of the poem they are now coming to life 1973 nothing happened we, we all can't tell why he wrote such a poem but 2022 2023 the poem is coming to life so can we say Kofi Awano is a prophet can we say he's a soothsayer or what can we say about him how will you define a poet i'll start from this how will you define a poet how will you define a poet anyone just like a poet how will you define a poet i think our gentleman will help us how will you define a poet based on what i have just described to you how will you define a poet a poet is someone who writes about poems so he is saying a poet is someone who writes poems so he leads us to our next question then what is poetry or what is a poem what is a poem don't forget poetry or a poem is an aspect of literature so if you can define literature then you can define poetry what is literature literature is the study about life very good. Let's do that here. Literature is just a study about life. What are the things you think we can get once we study literature? What are the things you think we can get? What are some of the morals and the values and of the same hand? Come on, that's two two zero. That's two zero to be. I'll get back to you, okay? Like what do you think we can get if we study? literature you all know you can become an engineer if you study science we all know you can become a physician if you study science um, a politician if you study political what do you think we can become when we study thank you for this privilege when you study literature uh, it can help you in many ways like you can teach in the university as a teacher, like a lecturer. Now the question is, how many times are we, the young ones, how many times do we get to read? How many times? Oh, well, I'll read my science book, my math book, my, I'll do my homework, then I'll go and sleep. And that's the end of it. And. To be honest with you, it is very detrimental to our growth as people because literature, one aspect of literature is that it gives you the, the privilege, as our brother said, to advance your world, to know a lot about social issues, to know a lot about global warming and a whole lot. It opens your horizon. I always say that if you neglect to read, then you just want to stay at ground one you just want to stay at where you are i i traveled outside the country because of literature i did psychology in school i did psychology and french in school they did not take me to any place i am not saying psychology and literature is no there are people who are making it advancing in that level but when you ask all these people, they will tell you reading. It's about reading. It's about reading. And it's not only about reading your science book or your mass social book. It is often about like reading, discovering new worlds through poetry, through fiction, non-fiction. Madam, I can tell you, there are some of the books here. If you open them, they are new. Like no one has touched them before. But we built this community for everyone but you can pick a book and i can tell you no one no one and it's very bad for such a thing to happen in our dispensation we are going to take um three poems 
we are going to read three points. I'll let you read them yourself. We'll all digest it. I don't want to do much of the talking. I'm going to select three points, then we we are all going to read it. When you are done, then we all digest digest it. I don't want to be the one like coordinating everything. Okay. Yeah. And I have questions. So and I have gifts. If you get them, though we are all going to get uh, these these items but some are going to get two some are going to get three if you are lucky you can get four so what will happen is that we are going to share the books if some if someone takes a question and the person answers it then the person will come for if you are sitting close the person the person will take yours so we will go home without the book we will do it that way so that everyone will participate okay so i just need three people i just need three uh i need three you're all running away. I should point. Okay, come. Yeah, come, come. Please, clap for her. I think. There's a lady talking at the back. I think, yeah, you also come. All right, I need a guy. You know, obviously, it's you. <laughs> come. Okay, okay, thank you. So, um, I'm going to pick the poems. I am a child of God. I am special. Ridicule cannot strike me. Obstacle cannot stop me. I hold my head high, proclaiming my uniqueness. I am a child of God. Thank you. Thank you, Mommy. A word I have forgotten very long time. Thank you for drawing my attention to obstacle. Obstacle. What was the meaning of obstacle? You also tell me the word you discovered from the poem. Uh -huh, challenges. Uh -huh. what, what else? Obstacles. Obstacle. Problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that what? Situation. Yes, obstacle. So now, when we are all glued to you, Madam, I have a problem. No. Now we're watching. Madam, there's an obstacle on my way. You, you see, you, so that it, it helps you to even hide the content of what you want to say from others. I hold my head high. Is that what? I, what's the meaning of I hold my head high? You are letting Madam do I hold my head. Imagine it's an exam, it's English. Confidence, I hold my head high like. It's not. It's not. That, it's not like you are um, proud or no. Yes, you are in a positive note. You, like you, you see yourself and as an as an AC personality. Like you are there. I hold my head high. Thank you. Thank you, mommy. Oh. Vicencia. Oh, Vicencia. Thank you. Let's give up. Thank you for this privilege. The title of my poem is The River Bed. The river bed built in our house and laid its eggs on our only tree. We did not want to send it away. We watched the building of the nest and sup supervised the egg laying. And the river returned in the goose of the owner, preaching salvation to us that owned the house. They say it's come from the west. We are the storms of the sea, had fallen, felt in goose, and the fishes dried their nets by lantern lights. It's sermon in the divination of ourselves, and our new horizon limits and its nests. But we cannot join prayers and answers of the communicants. We look for their homes every day, for new altars and strive to rebuild the old shrines defiled by the rivers as Thank you. Thank you. The first question you have to ask yourself when you who the river bed? I mentioned it. Who the river bed? What is the title of the poem? 
Hey, give the answers, and I'll get the books out. So that you understand when you are dealing with um, your blue feeding, your personal no subject books, you get to understand how to articulate. Okay, right now, the English you have been reading for exams. Who you don't even remember? See, so this is how you engage with poetry. Who wrote it? This poem. What the title of the poem? Then you get me. What is the title of the poem? What is the title? I guess I'm going by how traditionally I put it. Alright, so now the riverbed. I want you to watch from the poem. Just so to know if you paid attention. What did you hear from the poem? The weaver bed. Maybe I, I, there, there has to be a, a male voice. The weaver bed. The weaver bed built in our house and laid its eggs on our only tree. We did not want to send it away. We watched the building of the nest and supervised the egg laying. And the weaver returned in the guise of the owner preaching salvation to us that owned the house they say it came from the west where the storms at sea had felled the girls and the fishes dried their nest by lantern light each sermon is the divination of ourselves and our new horizon limits at its nest but we cannot join the prayers and answers of the communicants. We look for new homes every day, for new altars we strived to rebuild. The old shrines defiled weaver's excrement, the weaver bed. What did you hear from the poem? The weaver bed, what did you hear? we have the weaver bed coming in the form of a disguise because from that part we get to see that um it is not just referring to a weaver bed but then that part more or less talks about salvation of mankind yeah so from the disguise downwards it talks about the salvation that um, mankind received and then discipleship yeah. So, Madam, just open our inner eyes to a sentence in the poem. It says, "And the river returned in the guise of the owner, in the guise of the owner, meaning it has now positioned the story to like okay, it's not just about the river bed. So, something there is a there's an image behind." The weaver bed. So the weaver bed just came as a person, but there is something at the back. And Madame is subjecting it to that's from his point of view or her point of view that it is a salvation of mankind. There's also the hand. Thank you very much for this opportunity. From what I heard from the weaver bed, be the weaver. Uh, the weaver coming to lay his, uh, his egg in someone's house and later trying to take ownership. I can refer that to how um, um, the Western people came to co uh, colonize Ghana. As they came and they tried to make our resources as yes from satellites. So now our resources and everything were in their hands. While we, the uh, natives of the town, were suffering. From just a poem, we've gotten about three perspectives from from the religious point of um, salvation and from her point of colonization and from your point. Now, how you understand the poem is to you. That is what poetry is about. Today, Kofi, I'll here to explain 
he's the only one who can tell us that okay this poem is about this then we are we're coming. but now he's not here with us blessed be his memory i'll tell you how he died but we are now understanding the poem so we have the christian point where salvation happened and we have the the colonial aspect of it now there is also a line i want you to pick that line then someone will tell us then we'll move to a, a different point this is uh, the poem the, the line from the poem it says we look for new homes every day we look for new homes every day we look every day now it is as a result of listen the reason why this is happening is that the poem reads the old shrines defiled by the weaver's excrement like fuses excrement that's a, another now so because of this we are looking for new homes how do you understand this okay today you want to take all the books science and mass quiz is happening in your life they are parents sharing ideas contestant you are sharing ideas there eh? who is going to talk he said we what we look for new homes every day the ocean is defiled by the weaver's excrement. We look for new homes every day. Okay. If you are sitting next to me, then it means you need to go. Okay. We thank you for this privilege. Uh, what this stanza is talking about is like oh, sometimes. Sometimes our grandfathers and our, oh, let's say our fathers, sometimes they sit under trees where birds lay their eggs, or maybe they can sit under the tree to eat, but they won't know that there is a bird in, uh, on the tree, so it can defecate in their food whilst eating. Okay. Very good, please. <laughs> That is a, a common foundation to it. That oh, okay, if you are seated under a tree and birds are laying eggs, that now it's time to what move because you, no one can tell more. Now, from my point of view, as a reader, as a poet, talks about the two aspects they tackled on salvation, on the aspect of salvation and on the aspect of colonization now you have come to my home see the damage you've caused to my environment in terms of galamse we can talk about galamse we can um, talk about deforestation our mentality as a people alone now we we all read history we we know the the Saganet war the what we call the Saganti war huh. the Saganet war we know the bond of 1844 we can tell all, all the, the how the white how they came into a system changed our mentality that okay we were trading on the same path they want to be the middlemen like trade in between and they amass wealth for themselves they we are all poets but she is a poet, please. I'll ask a question about it. If you answer it now, now I can give you her basic side. So we we'll take the second. Or she, she did amazing. Like I wanted to read it again. It was so uh, interesting. We are all doing work. So please, please. The title of my poem is Rediscover. When our tears are dry on the shore and the fishermen carry their nets home. 
and the sea girls returned to bed Islam. And the laughter of the children receives us night. They shall still linger here the communion we forged, the feast of oneness which we partake of. There shall still be the eternal gatesman, who will close the cemetery doors and send the late mourners away. It cannot be the music we heard that night that still lingers in the chambers of memory. It is the new chorus of our forgotten commemories and the hallelujahs of our second lives. Thank you. I am going to skip my first question as I told you. Now we all know who wrote British copy and we all know the title of the poem with this British copy. My second, I think the next question I will ask is what feel if you go speak? Yes, yes. Or literary device. device, okay, okay. Did you pick from this poem? I a poet. So it is going to be it's going to be asked against the church today. Okay. Maybe a male voice. Okay, read this call. I'm reading with this call. When our tears are dry on the shore yeah. and the fishermen carry their nest home. And the seagulls return to bed island. And the laughter of the children we see at night. I heard something there. I think I'll take it, I'll take it again. I want you to listen and listen well. I asked a question, so please ponder over the question and get your answers read. So I'm taking it again. I asked what people of speech we discovery. When our tears are dry on the shore and the fishermen carry their nets home and the seagulls return to Bell Island and the laughter of the children we see at night, there shall be still linger here the communion we forged, the feast of oneness which we partook of. There shall still be the eternal gate man who will close the cemetery doors and send the late mourners away. It cannot be the music we heard that night that still lingers in the chambers of memory. It is the new cause of our forgotten comrades and the hallelujahs of our second selves. It's a nice poem. Oh. It's a nice word. When our tears are dry on the shore. When our tears are dry on the shore. So tomorrow, if I'm writing a letter to my headmaster, I talk, maybe complaining about a problem or an obstacle, I can say, Master, there are tears wetting our compound. You see, like, there are tears wet in our compound. They are not getting dry. So now you put your head mask. Ah, what's, what's this John girl tell? Meanwhile, you are describing a very serious situation. Kofi, Kofi was talking about something. Hey, she said, when her tears are dry on the shore and the fishermen carry their nets home. What did you get from this poem? The literary device and everything. Was something personified in there? That's a question you have to ask yourself. Was something metaphoric in it? Did, did I hear something similarly? When our tears are dry on the shore. Oh, your hand is up. Ah, shoot, shoot, let's go. So your person next to you, please, your book is, is going, you know. Or you you shoot first. You want to try? Very good. Your book is gone. Thank you for this picture. 
Why the verb is personification? She has mentioned personification. Now we have to go and find personification in the poem. Hmm? Who is doing as the honest? When you say that is all imagery. Yes. Because you can imagine it in your head and picture it. <laughs> Like you can imagine the poem like once a line is told, you get it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now we are back to personification. What was personified? What was personified? What was personified? I've taken your book. What was personified? Go on to try. Go on to try. Okay, what did you hear from the point? I I heard that the fishermen carried their nest home. Oh, very good, please. You can Thank you. Thank you very much. You've heard a line from the poem, and that's amazing. You've listened. So, what was personified? Now we are back to what was personified in the poem. Something was personified. Something was personified. Oh, should we read it again? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll give you options. When our tears are dry on the shore, um, and the laughter of the children we see at night. Mm. Oh, please try, try. So I think, so I think from the first line, when our tears are dry on the shore, they they were presenting our tears rather than the waters on the shore. So they use um, human. Uh, character as tears instead of the rivers that are dried at the oh, show. Please, please. Oh, this, this. <laughs> okay. one more, please. Please. Thank you, thank you very much. So when instead of going about saying, oh, and the rivers dried on the shore. Just try to find a way to personify. So, it, 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 learn this. Literature or poetry keeps the world uh, in, in an orbit way. So, we can go round and round. The same thing. You know, the true identity or whatever thing we are looking for is hidden in there. So let's say I, I, I am in the same class with you. I have caused you harm. And you want to report it. Now, you know school, how people come back and, at you and say, oh, uh, you snitch on me. You, you, uh, 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 you see, those. So now, you are my best friend. But you, you, you've caused me harm. Now I want to report you. With the, with, with the help of poetry, I can describe you to headmaster without you knowing you are the one I'm talking about. Unless you go, now you have to go back home now, sit with the poor. Ah, so what's my friend talking about me? You see, so that is one way we, we can approach literature. Like, uh, maybe I was telling you how we can go about the oh, uh, headmaster. Uh, there are tears wet in our compound. The headmaster will come out. Is it rain? No, it's not rainy. I mean, why you, you might be talking about an incident. So, it is what the accounts will say, uh, I mean, Sam. Yeah, I mean, Sam. And it, it, it is true that, that they communicate a, a whole lot of things. You see, so 
please thank you so much for showing us what was personified in the poem now how do you understand the poem how do you understand the poem sir why should you come back mm. ah okay so <laughs> I, I i want us to um look at the poem one more time and just from your point like perspective just tell us how the poem comes to you and please be ready you also tell us how the poem comes to you hey this gentleman are you here hey, i'm looking at your back okay now the poem rediscovery that's the last read then we will go to the next when our tears are dry on the shore and the fishermen carry their nets home and the seagulls return to bed island and the laughter of the children we cease at night there shall still linger here the communion we forged the feast of oneness which we partook of there shall still be the eternal gate man who will close the cemetery doors and send the late mourners away it cannot be the music we heard that night that still lingers in the chains of memory it is the new chorus of our forgotten comrades and the hallelujahs of our second selves please help us how do you get the poem or how does the poem come to you thank you for this um opportunity i'm gonna stand up um i think uh as an as an individual yeah people express themselves differently and based on that expression you also receive it differently right so the poem for me talks about how the past yeah you could leave the past there and reinvent yourself as a different person daily right so you could go through your memories of this happened to me and this or this and that happened to me my mom some some tragedies in your life right you can always talk about that but put those tragedies behind you and then move forward right and by you moving forward is how you reinvent yourself so these past experiences makes you who you are yes but use that as your strength to move forward what is the title of the poem so how do you, you use that to rediscover your inner power or your strength or wherever you are thank you Please. now we all understand with discovery from his perspective now I, you with discovery how do you understand I understand it by leaving the past okay. and continuing our life. Okay. Thank you. Please. Everything shall still remain as people. Okay, so you have to just rediscover yourself. You have to just keep going on and on and on. I'd rather we'll end it than we'll go to the third. <laughs> Please uh, rediscovery. Like I can say, like never give up in life. If you listen to those behind, who like if you are manufacturing something like a car, and like they will tell you that oh that you know like discouraging you. Like so, when you listen to them, you you think you can't make it in life. Thank you. So we shouldn't listen to those behind. Guys, we should never give up in life. We should keep our dreams alive. No matter what you face in life, you should never give up. Thank you. Uh, now we've gotten some lines for we have we've gotten some poetry lines. Okay. Uh, we should never give up. Now dreams. We should think positive. He said um, we should. Uh, we should not let people despise us or discourage us now we are like we all have 
Now we all have stanzas, we all have lines that we are going to use to write our poems today. Okay, so please, as you say, just keep thinking about your, your lines. I also wanted to add this. After the challenges, the, um, the poem talks about there shall be, there shall still be the et uh, eternal gate man who will still, who will close the cemetery door. So yeah, they have hope that there's someone somewhere who will come and help them face their challenge. So I think yeah, to deal with a little bit religion, maybe I trust, I believe in God, God will help me face my challenges. Thank you. They say we die alone. Yes, but when you get to the cemetery or even the mortuary, you you can't carry yourself in there. Someone will have to help you and take you in. So regardless of the obstacle, now we are back to that word, obstacle. So regardless of the obstacle, regardless, there is always someone there. I am not good with science, I am not good with maths. No, regardless, there is someone who is going to teach you what you don't understand. Okay. And that's one thing I discovered in junior high that helped me, I hope. I, I, I moved from schools to schools. I was in a buying or government, I was in a government and I was taken to private school. When I got there, you know, private school, some, they are far gone, like, you know, how, how we think, like that mentality that with private schools, they are gone, you can't compete with them. That first time, they lashed the whole class. They lashed everyone, essentially. They lashed everyone because how can someone from government school come and just that one thing, everything is over for the whole class. So I tapped, I asked, I, like, why are you so good? Like, why? What, what, what am I doing wrong? No, no, he was, he was taking his English serious. So the more he reads, the more she reads, the more she comes across like, these vocals that if we ask about, you know, social studies is always about what are the challenges of uh, democracy, you know, oh, blah, 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 everywhere. You could like name for states. Uh -huh. So she was getting the help from English language. So now she was, she was able to manipulate. Ah. So she wasn't that. Ah. I, I, was, I was good with I can I can get a formula, okay. Uh, characteristics of democracy. I'll get the formula tolerance. Then I'll use T. So I'll, I'll start T. Uh, acronyms. Yes, that's it. So I'll, I'll get them. Then when the question is asked, I'll just write tolerance. And the teacher will mark me one. So you see, I'll just go and write like challenges of or characteristics of. You see, I'll just name it down. But which now will come and say. Um, in a democratic country, these are some of the ah. <laughs> so I can pick a question, the answer sheet. I see tolerance. I see tolerance. Why, why are you getting two and I'm getting one? And now she became a helper. She, I, 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 I can't. I, if I tell you we didn't fight, I'm alive. We fought. All those people are like I mentioned. Now I don't even hear from Daniel. We, we, we've parted ways. Everyone has gone miles away and all that. But they were helpers. And up to now, which we don't talk that much, but I can call them. And the vibe is just like, still normal. We discovered our words and how we we can all help each other. So that is the discovery for us. So please. Don't tell me I'm not good with maths. Don't go and say that in school again. If you are not good in maths, yes, we all understand. You have to accept that you are not good with maths. But you have to identify the one in the classroom that is good with maths. Oh, uh, what's the name? Benjamin. Okay. Now, when we close to at three, Benjamin, my mom gives me five CDs. I'll spend four CDs. That one CD, I'll give it to you. You have to use 30 minutes of your time to take me through this. Then you go. You see, this is a mentality that we don't use people just anyhow and let them go. Oh, okay. What's the name? Nadromo. Okay. I have a, a friend for now, she's a poet. Nadromo. Okay, Nadromo is good in English language. Now, my mom gives me two CDs. That's two CDs. 
Okay, if I give you 50 pesos, can you? T- okay, I'll take it. So that now she, 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 she will acknowledge the effort you are trying. Oh, as for me, my mom gives me one CD. Why would you say I'm sorry? <laughs> we are worse than so that's being truthful and so me so but i want you to spend like five minutes of your time after school and teach me this if the person is the genuine person and we spend it with her madam i know the the educational system we don't have to work, uh, organize extra classes and take money that's G, now ges i don't have to question but madam I know sometimes if you if you close from school, madam, you can stand there and talk with your other teachers ah before we get home. Madam, can you spend that ten minutes of your time and just take me through phonetics? That's you recognize. I'm not going to I'm not saying go and tell, tell madam, accuse madam. <laughs> we take the last club then we will go. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. The title of my poem is a death foretold. Sometimes the pain and the sorrow return, particularly at night. I will grieve again and again tomorrow, for the memory of a death is foretold. I believe in hope and the future of hope, in victory before death collective, inexorable, obligatory and in the enduring prospect of love. Though the bed is empty, in the child's happiness, though the meal is meg, I believe in light and day beyond the tomb, far from the solitude of the womb, and the mystical night in the coming of fruits, the stripped salmon and the crooked crab, I believe in the men and the gods in the spirit and the substance, in death and the reawakening, in in the promised festival and the nail in our heroes and the nation, in the wisdom of the people, the certainty of victory, the validity of struggle. I will grieve again tomorrow. I will not grieve again. Thank you. A death foretold. What did you hear from the poem? It is based on what you heard that you are able to tell what that means to you or what the poem means to you. What did you hear? What did you hear? What did you hear from the poem? Now I'm taking it for the last time so that we all can get it. A death foretold. Sometimes the pain and the sorrow return, particularly at night. I will grieve again and again tomorrow for the memory of a death foretold. I believe in hope and the future of hope, in victory before death, collective, inexorable, obligatory, in the enduring prospect of love, though the bed is empty. In the child's happiness, though the meal is measure. I believe in light and day beyond the tomb, far from the solitude of the womb and the mystical night. In the coming of fruits, the striped salmon and the crooked crab. I believe in men and the gods, in the spirit and the substance in death and the reawakening in the promised festival and denial in our heroes and the nation in the wisdom of the people the certainty of victory the validity of struggle i will not grieve again tomorrow i will not grieve again I believe in men and the gods, in the spirit and the substance, in death and the reawakening, in the promised festival and denial, in our heroes 
and the nation in the wisdom of the people the certainty of victory the validity of struggle i will not grieve again tomorrow i will not grieve again i believe in men and the gods okay so what did you hear from the poem i heard that the pain and sorrow returns oh, oh. i heard that there were mystical nights <laughs> Thank you for this privilege. I le- I heard that no matter our sorrows, no matter our fears, we should have f- faith in ourselves. What goes around comes back. Oh, thank you. I heard that it will go tomorrow, but I won't, I won't go tomorrow again. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to my understanding, mm-hmm. a death photo talks about life and how death happened. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, I learned that. It talks about the memories of some dead things, dead people. So we sh- oh, we shouldn't fear. All right, please do that. <laughs> behind so the poem is by the way reinventing yourself so leaving the past behind it's time to start anew reinvent yourself and find a path that's right um it's not an easy road to take and there are bombs along the way but if you keep the hope in your heart you will make it through each day it start with leaving old wounds and painful memories behind and moving forward with the spirit that's loving, gentle, and kind. Um, Believe in yourself and trust that you have the strength to grow, to share the skill of who you were and let the new you show. With love and hope in your heart and a spirit that's bold and true, you can reinvent yourself and find a a brighter path ahead of you. That's where I got to, and then I got called to stand up here. (laughs) Um, So, um, quickly tell me some art, yeah. Hello. 
first of all, Medindi and Abego, Nomias Nubian. I played drums. I've, I've been a musical artist for a long time. Just playing of the drums, writing literature for people. So when you talk about art, what, what would you say art is? Right. Art is just like the creation of objects or expression of or expression of something that is in, intended to be artistically pleasing, right? That's what pretty much art is. So some some people can use literature to express themselves. So when people are using literature to express these arts, it's through poetry, whereby they use different literary tools, like he was talking about imagery, um, uh, point of view, perspectives. They'll use these type of tools to express that. But you can also understand that art, by you singing, is also you expressing yourself, right? By you drawing these things on the wall, it's also a form of art. Um, my sister was talking about colonization, right? What you have to understand is we are all unique in the way we express ourselves. So if if you get colonized, you know, you know, people usually talk about uh, colonization as in foreign powers coming here, like my sister was talking about, our resources, our um, government. But there's also something as mental colonization. Everybody know what mental colonization is? What is mental colonization? Being That's right. So mental colonization is where you internalize somebody else's or foreigners' ideas so much they are believed, they are valued, that you you pretty much personify what that foreigner stands for, right? So the whites come, they give you X, Y, Z, and you believe in so much that what you have, your own culture, your own values, your own belief, you put it away. Hence, you can't really express yourself without expressing them. Everybody understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right? So, the main thing about being an art, for me personally, is being unique in your perspective. Right? So, if I stand here and I write a six, from people sitting here, we will see the six as a six. But from your point of view, you see it as a what? Nine. As a nine. Everybody has seen that meme, right? But if you could express yourself well, then I can understand what you mean. Everybody understand what I'm saying, right? So being an artist, being an artist be, be it through literature, through music, through self-expression, such as dancing, it's all fine. Because you want it authentically expressing who you are. Don't let other people colonize you of your mind whereby you lose yourself, right? So that's one of the things that we're talking about whereby people come, they influence you so much that you tend to lose yourself. And once you start losing yourself, you're not really reflecting your true self. Everybody understand? So that's a little bit I could say about myself. And in terms of how art has helped me, um, I started playing the drums in church for a long time, and then I helped other people learn um, to play the drums. And then when people got into music, that's that's how I helped them in terms of writing literature also came about knowing about music. So anything that you really want to do, you can I believe you can do it as long as you do it authentically for yourself. Anybody has any questions? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Being the queen that rules the night, with a baby family in the house. In prayer, she closes her house and watches us as we pray. I am 13 years of age. The title of my poem is Life is a Game. Life is a Game. Travel is all. And as we do, wish others for, no matter how far the river is. I will return home with water. It's just a matter of time. Thanks. Woo! Keep up. There are some moments in your life you will never forget, but you will have to let go because what has happened cannot change. Move on with your life.
because there is a chance ahead of you. Never give up, never give up, because you will always have a Savior. And the Savior's name is Jesus Christ. You will never know when your blessings will come. So never give up and move on, because God is awake. Thank you. 1935, our weather in the Volta region is good here in Ghana and also um, computer legal. He later went to um, America. He published a lot of work over there. One of his work, his first work was rediscovery. That is what he did. And that poem really, you know, we helped a lot of Africans to rediscover themselves. As my brother here was saying, you need to rediscover your art, your talent. You get it. Your talent is what you can actually paint as what? Ask to the world world to patronize. You get it. So you always you have what? Rediscover your art yourself. And that is what Professor Kofi Akuna did when he was in America. He studied arts and he also you know, published a lot of works over there. Later he moved back to Ghana and then had the legal, the literature department, which is English. Later, he was jailed for some, you know, political reasons, to which he published some poems. I think you all read the poem. And he later came back and graduated. So, as um, Mr. James was saying, he traveled to Kenya in 2013 to actually what? Because of literature, he wanted to what? express himself and to also share his work to the world. And unfortunately, he was gunned down by um, some Al-Qaeda's or ISIS. So that is the short story about him. He said he's always inspired anytime he see people try. So that is what actually inspired him. He always wants to see people try in their own way to become what they want to become. So this year, the Afro Art Gallery chose him because it, this year also marked his 10th anniversary ever since he died in 2013. So this year marks his um, 10th anniversary and it, last month was his birth month actually, this March. So we did, we saw it to be wise to actually celebrate him and to honor his work. And to also use the opportunity or the platform to also talk about greening words, Mother Earth. Greening words? Mother Earth. Greening words? Mother Earth. Which other way do you think you can bring Mother Earth? Do you have any ways you can bring Mother Earth? Anyone? Try. Try. Okay. When we talk about Green Mother Earth, what does it mean? So, if the Earth is green, currently you can see that you can't even walk under the sun for more than two hours, can you? Why? Because what? Because it's what? Hot. Why is it hot? What? Because the ozone, come on, try it. The ozone layer. Okay, the ozone layer is what? Depleted. And it's because the trees are what? Being cut down and we don't plant them anymore. And it's because we don't have green earth anymore. So as we are trying to promote our culture and um, literature, we also want to also use the platform to preach about green earth, mother earth, so that the earth will be very free. So for that, we will say that we are grateful um, for the schools who are currently here. Uh, the next thing is to select a poem and then we can call it a day. Thank you very much. I'm giving back. All right, so viewers, once again, you're welcome to Afro Art Gallery. Um, we had a successful show, um, even though it was challenging, you know, the whole day, a lot of schools didn't show up, but hey, we, the little school that showed up, we were able to actually do the reading of the poem, and we also did the selection of the poem and the Ghanaian cultural dance as well, too. Um, the second phase is about to take place, which we will be retouring the schools, you know, to equip up the interest 
to um, the kids, engage them with celebrity and also, you know, uh, other resource personnel as well to, to talk about our team for this year. And as we said, we are celebrating um, Prof. Kofi Awuno's work for his immense contribution to African literature. He has really helped us a lot with his vision and we believe he deserves to be honored this year. Luckily, I have already say, but sometimes we don't know what, what the best thing is. He, this year happened to be his 10th anniversary ever since he passed away in 2013. And so we are saying to the family that look, we are, we are really with them in spirit and everything. So we had a successful show today. And as you can see, he announced it. Library was very supportive, and to all the people who actually helped us to make this program a success, we say are equal to them, and to all the schools who were able to make it, we say are equal to them. My name still remains the king, and thank you very much.